this kind of a site like an e-commerce site where usually people go and shop for their products or uh, artic uh, articles or items should be very familiar to most of you right so I'll be just briefly walking you through what this is all about so most of the e-commerce sites if you notice they would be providing you something called a search text box or a search place where you can type in your query what you're looking for and then you can hit the search button and it would come back with all the search results right so this is more of a text based search where the database has to be searched and bring back all the results and display it on the page and also if you notice on your uh, left hand side you'll also notice a lot of uh, sections where you can filter the search results by based on prayer price or the brand what you're looking for or some sort of uh, attribute what you're specifically hitting into it. So most of the time all these features fit into a search component or a search uh, application. So initially when people started building search applications or the application which would need search feature, so they started with the databases prior to anything called Lucene or Solar. So with databases, if you guys are all familiar with how you can do a text-based search, right? So you have to do a select star from a particular table using the like uh, statement and put the phrase or the term what you're looking into that uh, query and you search it back. So eventually what happens in the back end is you has to go and scan the entire table and look for the term or the phrase. Say for example, if you're looking for a quad core mobile, it has to be exactly searched into the table by scanning each and every record. So when it was only say 100 to 300 uh, thousands of records, it was easy to scan the entire table and fetch the results back and display it on the page or on the screen. So when the products or the records kept growing like into say millions of millions of records, scanning the tables was a very slow process and it is a very highly uh, expensive operation. So people started to think something alternative to how to get out of this kind of a problem then they started using indexes. So what index does is instead of going and scanning the entire table, you can go and pre-process the table to be optimized for searching. So that is what usually we call it as an indexing. So if you guys uh, wanted to correlate something which is really uh, near real time to an index kind of a terminology, you would have seen something like an index on the back of the book, right? So the index of the book is something similar what usually people uh, prefer to pre-process the content and keep all the terms ready where they can go ahead and search it. So then people started building indexes on the databases and it added some uh, performance gains and they still had to deal with the huge data when it is being uh, added or when you have to keep on re-indexing still the databases were not the efficient ones. So then there has to be something dif different data structure itself where the indexes are efficiently handled because in the tables, the index, the way how the B-trees most of the time handles is not very efficient for text-based search. So people started thinking to build something different and that's when the Lucene evolved. So that was the starting point uh, or the trigger, why do we need a different search systems or a different uh, search platform to build this kind of applications or to build this kind of features which would serve the search needs. Fine. So as I said, before uh, divulging into the details of Solar, fine. So as I mentioned, there are two key aspects uh, to build any search application. So indexing and the uh, searching uh, process. So the basic reason uh, why we need indexing is to make sure the efficiency of the data which is stored is easily easily retrievable in a most efficient and the fastest way and without indexing you'd be ending up doing something like a full table scans and you will be ending up consuming more resources resources to go and retrieve those documents so that's a primary reason of indexing the content in a way that it can be optimized for 
speed and performance for easy retrieval. So by indexing you can go ahead and do a small lookup kind of a thing into some sort of a map where you can locate those documents, similar technique to the way how the books are indexed and stored all the phrases or the terms at the back of the page. So this is the same technique which will be very efficient in the search applications or search frameworks. So just to give a very high level flow of what really happens in indexing when you are using a framework like a Lucene. So a document in Lucene terminology or in Solar terminology is nothing but a record. So a record initially will be submitted to the indexing process or a bunch of records or documents. So before it gets stored into the index, it has to be analyzed the way how the documents has been submitted, whether it is an XML document, whether it, whether it is a pure text document, whether it has a lot of garbage uh, text or garbage characters. So all those analysis has to happen upfront because the entire document cannot be stored as is for indexing and it has to be analyzed first and do some sort of a prim preliminary investigation before it can be submitted to the index. So the first step always is the analysis process. And once the analysis is done, so the document itself again cannot be stored as is even after the preliminary analysis and doing some sort of pre-processing. So the documents has to be converted into tokens or terms. So a document can have, say for example, uh, I can treat this as, uh, let me take an example, I can say a document could be having a lot of text, hello Edurek, uh, something like this, Apache, Solar, right? So if you, if you wanted to store this document for indexing, you have to break the entire document text into tokens or streams. A token is nothing but an independent or an atomic unit of text or a stream of text, which we call it as tokens or streams. So once the document is analyzed and converted into tokens or streams, it is then submitted to the indexing process and the document itself is most of the time stored in the inverted index data structure model which we'll be covering it very soon. So, so far uh, we'll just tag it as these are the two key steps or the key, uh, key pro process, process steps which happens into the indexing flow. So, on the bottom side, you may notice this is the exactly what happens. So once the document or text is analyzed, it is sent into the tokenization. The tokenization splits the stream of text into each word or terms. Most of the times people use it alternatively, term, token, uh, word or whatever it is. Most uh, popularly used is token or term. So once the tokenization is done, so the way how the index in index stores those terms is something called as a term vector or bit vectors most of the time. So here on the text stream which we call it as one document, I have two terms or two tokens. Each term or token will be stored as a term vector by remembering its position, offset and length. So every term vector will represent every token or a term and when you are searching for Edureka, so the first lookup happens into this term vector to locate the term or the document where it can be found in the index. So this is, uh, this is at very high level how the indexing data structure is represented in Lucene. Okay, so when I said uh, you can have multiple documents or a document which can be submitted to the index. So most of the time you can correlate a document nothing more than a record or a, a set of fields. So a document uh, can contain set of fields similar to your database uh, terminology if you wanted to correlate. A record can have multiple columns. In documents also you can have multiple fields. So a document with a composition of fields is represented as a document which can be submitted to a analysis process. Most of the time the analysis process is handled by an analyzer which we will be covering it 
more or less in a very high level today. So the analyzers analyze the documents and the fields, what kind of fields they are, what kind of document it is, and based on what kind of analyzer you are using, it will do some sort of pre-processing. Once the pre-processing is done, the document and the fields will be submitted from the analyzer to the index writer. So the index writer takes care of updating the index. So this is just the high level process of creating an index. So similarly, as I mentioned, there are two aspects in building any search platform. It's very critical for us to understand the indexing part and the searching part of it. So once you have indexed the data into an inverted index or the index storage, so you have multiple ways of retrieving that information back. Either you can use straight away Lucene APIs. So you, you can use a lot of Lucene API flavors which we'll be covering in very short. So you can use those APIs to retrieve that information or you can use something called a query parser which is something similar to a, your ANSI SQL or a SQL syntax. So using a Lucene query parser syntax, you can do something like a select star from this index to retrieve all the information what you want. So that's what we call it as the expression language of Lucene. So Lucene also has its own expression language where you can write expressions, expressions to query the information what you are stored in the directory or stored in the index. Yeah, so directory is nothing but the index what we are calling it here, as simple as that. Okay. So here in the searching components you will come across, so the first thing is if you are doing a query parser kind of uh, fetching or the query parser route, you have to build an expression and then submit it to a query parser. So along with the query, query parser, there has to be some sort of an analyzer which will be working in conjunction with the query parser to analyze what you are trying to query, whether that query fits into the index what we have stored it and the analyzer what we have used it in the indexing process. Once the query parser is through scanning the syntax of the expression, it submits the query object to the index searcher which retrieves the results or the documents and gives it back. Fine, so since we have seen the indexing process, as I said, Lucene uses the inverted indexing technique to store the documents into the index storage. So let's briefly understand what is this all about and why we have to worry about looking into this. So inverted indexing technique is nothing but when you see a table index where when you index something and you are looking up into uh, index and retrieving the information, the straightaway indexing is not uh, very efficient. So you have to have some sort of a pre-lookup for the index as well. So we are adding one more step, the pre-lookup for the index itself and then we go and fetch into the index. So rather than directly going and looking up into the index, we also have something called term vectors which, we, which acts like a pre-lookup map into the index. So that's one advantage of having inverted index. And the second aspect is there are a lot of things where indexing process itself will be very time consuming and slow when you have bulk updates happening into your index. Say for example, if you are uh, updating your documents very often, even uh, if you have a moderate size of your indexing database, index, index storage, updating more frequently is also going to cause a lot of challenges. So Lucene uses something called a merge sort to update the bulk updates. So basically what Lucene does is it accumulates the updates be between some duration and then creates a new local block and then merges with the entire index. So this technique of merging the index proves to be really efficient than any other models of using a B3 indexes or some other techniques where you have to go on, keep on altering your B3s rather than merging it with some uh, bulk stagnation provides a better performance. So if you notice, so on the right hand side you may see there are new records or documents which is being added and this documents gets accumulated and eventually it gets merged into the index. So this is a very brief uh, approach of Lucene how it handles the inverted indexing. 
Fine. So as I mentioned, uh, Lucene, like databases, it does not have anything called a schema or a uh, relational uh, uh, structure kind of a thing. So Lucene storage schema is very flexible. So for say for example, in one document you can have uh, two fields, in another document you can have three fields. That's the first level of flexibility. And the other level of flexibility is the third document can have entirely different set of fields. So it is not mandatory that every document has to have the same field. So it is up to the record how they wanted to uh, consume those uh, fields in the record. So it is very flexible. So you can have any number of fields and you can have any field in the document. So there is no mandatory or constraint that you have to use this kind of field or this kind of things. So in the storage schema you can have multiple documents. Each document can have multiple fields. Each document can have variable uh, number of fields and different fields altogether. And each field can be of different types. There are different types of fields what Lucene uh, supports like based on uh, the field types. What uh, It could be a copy field, it could be a text field. So we'll be covering all those things in detail later point of time. Okay. And also one more point, uh, it's not that your schema or your structure is always fixed. So you can add more number of fields dynamically based on your requirement of your application. So you don't have to worry about that. Once I fix the schema, you have to stick to it. 